All right, good morning, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for joining in. Welcome to yet another session of the Digital Marketing Training. I hope you guys can uh, hear me loud and clear, and if you also you can see my screen. Hey, good morning, Anuja, Anuja, and Atanu. I believe you guys can hear me loud and clear, and also you can see the screen. Please do acknowledge in the chat window. All right, perfect. So do let me know if in case there's, a, there's some trouble in the audio and so forth. I'm uh, using the same settings as yesterday. All right, so let's get started with today's session, guys, by talking about uh, the stuff which we have covered in yesterday, which is the recap part. So I would request each one of you to do type in across the topics which you remember from the yesterday session, please. All right, so Mukul says, we started with the GoDaddy web server changes. Absolutely, yes. And Atanu says it was host creator, the hosting site, yes. And uh, Anuja just say it was about website designing through WordPress, about the themes, about hosting, about domain, about connecting domain to the hosting. And Atanu says it was about the domain name servers, that's correct. And Mukul says then we started with WordPress, that's correct. And Adanu says, uh, name server settings, absolutely yes. And Anu says, I tried my best to change the theme, but I cannot. Why is that so? Okay. Anu, pass on your WordPress details to me. I'll just go ahead and help you. Adanu says it was about cPanel, which I've shared which I have showed you. Anuja just says we spoke about who is. Mukul says we designed our website. And Atanu says WordPress setup. And Atanu says the appearance in the themes. Absolutely, yes. So what I'm going to do, thanks so much, guys, for listing out the topics which you remember from the previous session. So now I'm going to be taking, I'll be taking across your doubts, your clamp, your questions and so forth. Let me just go ahead and open across. So Anuja, I do need your login URL also for your WordPress. So guys, do type in across your questions, your queries. All right, so I think I need to pull it from myself. No, Anuj, I was asking for your login URL, basically. It's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and I have found it myself. It's okay. And oh, all right, no problem, Anuja. So I know I can understand uh, when I say Anuj or Anuja, there's sometimes confusion. All right, no problem. So Anuj here, your email ID, your username and password I'm typing in. I did show yesterday, how can you go ahead and change across your theme? I'm, change, I'm saying, I'm, I'm doing it once again. For Anuj Mukul says, my question is, if I take any theme and if I want changes in that, is that possible? So you can do the changes, uh, but Mukul, well, let's say you're the, I'm, I'm taking your situation Mukul. You've, you've chosen a theme, you've done changes on it. Now, after let's say a month, you decide that you want to change the theme again, then it's going to be a rework right from the scratch totally. Only a few of the elements which you have changed and which you have implemented in the previous theme will get transferred to the new theme because every theme in itself has a different settings altogether. So that's why I recommended that you first decide fully on the theme part that yes, this is the theme which I want. And once you have decided the theme, then you work onto it in terms of putting across content, editing across features, editing images, editing content and so forth. Because once you're done with that, 
then changing themes is going to be a difficult task again and again. So this is the priority. Decide on the theme part first, work on that part, and then go ahead with the other. So how we can, nobody, so this is going to be a time consuming process. Mukul, that's for everyone. If you have, let's say, set up across a website with content and everything with a theme A, then uh, you are looking at, you know, choosing theme B, theme C, theme D, you want to change it multiple times, you won't be. Had it been this, had this been the case, you would have seen websites getting changed on, uh, you know, on a constant basis. Like in the morning, you go to Snapdeal and you'll find something else. In the evening, you'll find something else. And in the next day, you'll make, you'll see them changing the content, I mean, the changing theme with the same content on a regular basis. So that is something which is a time-taking task. It's altogether a new website which you would have to prepare. All right, so I have long, I have uh, got Anud's, uh, what do you say, WordPress open right in front of me, okay. Okay, so let me just see how the site really looks like right now. And Mukul says it's not done through WordPress. I'm sorry, what is not done through WordPress? What portion? That theme part. The theme part is done through WordPress only. You go to the appearance in the theme section, Mukul. But are you talking in the same continuation to the previous version? Changing of theme is done through WordPress only, but once you are changed, once you have changed the theme, the previous content which you had, that will not get transferred in full. Only certain elements of that particular, uh, you know, theme will get transferred to a next theme. So theme, the moment you change the theme of your website, let's say from theme A to theme B, the content part is going to get distorted even the functionalities and features, because every theme has got different functionalities and features and so forth. But the changing of theme is done by with the WordPress panel only, when you go to the appearance section and then themes. All right, so Anuj, I've gone to the appearance section and then clicking on the themes. That's what I have shown you yesterday. All right, now there are several themes right up over here. Let's say I wanna go ahead and implement this. What I have to do is I have to activate this. I'm activating it. See, it got activated. So what was the difficulty right over here? Where was the problem you were facing, Anuj? See, the theme has got changed now. Right, you need to, uh, I'll be sharing across the, what do you say, uh, the recordings, recordings with Nathan and he'll be sharing that across to you within this week itself. And the moment you're going to get that across, I would do look into the recording and see again and again how that was being taught across. All right, so hope that helps. I can go ahead and activate another theme. So let's say this theme I want to go ahead and activate. I just have to click onto it and then click and then click on to activate if I want this theme to be activated on my website. Anuj, are you good? Does that answer your question? Let me know. So this is a previous theme with the all right, I'm doing a refresh and you can see the theme has got changed. If you are feeling that why exactly but the website is not exactly the same as what the preview is, I've given explanation on that part also that with the free themes, you do not get every single content. Right, with the free themes, you don't get every single element which is there in the uh, preview which is being shown but if you go with the paid theme with the paid theme you do that how can we see the change theme on our website I, I've shown you Anuj I've shown you didn't you see did you realize when I did a refresh that the change in your website you just go ahead and open across a website just have a look carefully I'm gonna so I've changed it multiple two times I'm gonna change it the third and the fourth time so what theme do you really see right now I mean the content and the post the color of the font and the color of the background color and so forth. What is this? This is actually related to this theme only. 
let's say I want to get across this red color theme being activated. I can go ahead and click on to activate. The moment I click on to activate, this theme has got now activated, the red color one. So let me just go ahead and refresh this. I'm refreshing it. All right, do you see now the red color theme has been activated? You see it by going onto, the, onto your website live, right? The front end of your website. Right, Anuj, let me know if in case you have any further query. Anyone else who has got any query, any question, please feel free to write Anuja, please let me know. All right, any other questions, any other doubts, guys, feel free to put that across in the chat window and then we'll get started today with the search engine optimization which is a marketing, one of the marketing channels, right? We have understood. Or right, Anuja says, can we change the heading of the website? Like my website heading is Fashion for Fab by Anuja. Yes, you can do that. So for that, you would have to go to Appearance and then Reading. Sorry, uh, Settings and then Reading. Settings, Reading, Okay, no, sorry, settings in general and right over here. So I'm saying it again, Anuja, settings in general. Just go over there and then change this. All right, the tagline. Okay. Hope that helps. And then you go ahead and click on the save changes. All right, perfect, so are we all good? Shall we move further? And in just a second, I went through the video YouTube. There they discussed about the logo part, okay? Yes, you can go ahead and, yes, you can go ahead and upload across your logo. In case you wanna go ahead and build across your logo, there are several tools. Should we work on it now? Yes, absolutely, please do so. The logo, if I talk about, uh, can be created through several tools. You can just, if you want to go ahead and create a cluster logo for your website and so forth, you can uh, find out various free logo making websites. It's a free tool logo. Uh, there, are, there are several logo making tools which are there for free. All right, so canva.com is one of the best ones. This is my favorite, otherwise I can see there's so many of them. Logo Garden. All right, so this is my favorite. Let me just go ahead and uh, pass on the URL. So camera.com is absolutely good in terms of many things. So when it comes down to designing without having any uh, designing skill set, without having any knowledge about any designing tool or a software, camera.com works the best. All right, so as you can see, there are so many options which it's being pro which it is which it's providing across right up over here. All right. So as you can see on the left hand side, there are several. Uh, low options which are available for free. You can go ahead and somehow use them also and make edits as per your own wish. Right, as you can see, it says free.
make sense any other questions you have or shall we get started with today's uh, topic in case you have any question or right, just says also in that part they removed the sample page i think we should do once we made our oh yes absolutely that's the reason why i gave you the link of those website those videos you can go ahead and follow the same approach which they are doing because see, website designing and development is a total different uh, skill set altogether. It would take a lot of time. Our major focus is to help you with the website part in a, in, a, in a brief way, I would say, because again, the idea is not to make you guys designer and developer. The idea is to go ahead and teach you and train you the marketing uh, stuff in detail, right? So which is gonna get started today. In the very first session also, we spoke the marketing language, like, you know, why people use the internet, what are the things people use over the internet, and what are the different channels, uh, and how do marketers really get across opportunity on all these channels to promote their product and services. But in detail, now we'll be studying that across, and that's where our major focus is gonna be. So we won't spend time, uh, you know, in, in uh, learning how to edit the website, how to really make more changes, how to really go ahead and add more functionalities within the website. Since you've got the basics, since you've got the platform with you, and you, uh, once the platform is ready, you can watch several videos. You can watch several videos. Right. Guys, just give me one second. Just I'm gonna be on mute for a minute. All right, sorry guys, uh, there was some, uh, something because of which I had to be on pause, be on mute. All right, so I'm just reading out some chats. Uh, Pratik says, suppose right now we practice on a free theme and make contents and later on, uh, we once we move to the paid theme, is it okay? So I'll, I'll, I'll suggest you Pratik not to make so much changes in your content part, okay? Uh, 
I mean, it should not happen that you have done a lot of effort in terms of putting a excessive amount of content and whatever content you have put in the free theme uh, doesn't get transferred to the another theme. And from one theme to another, from one theme to another, uh, if you go ahead and make changes, I mean, you go ahead and move, right? The content doesn't get moved in totality. That's something which I'm letting you know right before, okay? So make sure whatever you do on one of the themes to get an understanding, don't get so much content up that it becomes a trouble for you later on that. You know, you might feel that, okay, I, I made so much effort and so forth. All right, so let's get started with the uh, marketing part, guys. So once your website is ready, you are all set to go ahead and promote it, all right? Promote it to the, your target audience. Now, whatever your website is all about, whether it's a website on your name, on when I say if, if your website is on your name, it means that you're trying to promote yourself as a professional. All right. Let's say you are a digital marketing. You're trying to promote yourself as a digital marketing professional. You'll go ahead and uh, optimize your website. You'll go ahead and run ads. You're going to go ahead and create a presence on uh, all the social media websites and all, all that stuff. Similarly, it goes for the businesses. If you have a website related to any specific venture idea, an idea related, uh, an idea which uh, you want to execute, a specific business you want, you're coming up with, a venture you're coming up with, then the next step is to go ahead and promote it across and promote it to the right set of audience only. Promote it to that audience. Excuse me. Promote it to that audience only who will be going ahead and uh, buying across your product at the end of the day. Right? It makes more sense to go ahead and promote it that audience instead of going ahead and uh, straight away publicizing to each and every one which is which is not the right thing to really do so i'm going to use across my document guys yesterday i believe you all each one of you have received the document the introduction document right in your emails i have sent it to everyone right so perfect now let's move ahead and to our, we will Take the search engine part first. Thanks, Pratik, Mukul, uh, Tanu, and Anuja for acknowledging that you have received it. And uh, how about Anuj? All right, Anuj, thanks so much. Now, we have spoken about the different channels which are there in the internet world. We have spoken in detail in the very first session that what are those things which you guys as internet users do uh, on the internet? Uh, do you, uh, you know, kind of, you know spend more of your time over the emails checking emails do you spend more time over facebook or any other social media network or do you i mean what all other channels so one of the channels we're going to be picking up right now which is search engine search engines now why is it that i'm picking and choosing search engine guys i would say 60 to 70 percent of the traffic traffic when i say visitors on a website okay 60 to 70 percent of the visitors on a website uh, comes from the search engines. I'm talking in generic. There could be differences in situation to situation, business to business. All right. If I talk about uh, a B2B and a B2C business, both. When I say B2B, B2B stands for business to business, and B2C stands for business to consumers. I, if in case you want me to talk more in depth about B2B and B2C, what exactly are they of those, right? To business to business and business to consumer, I can take examples also. I'm assuming that you guys know, if in case I can. So, you know, websites like Amazon, Snapdeal, Flipkart, they're B2C. So these are businesses which are selling products to the end consumers, right? Who are gonna be the, who would be the, who would be the uh, end users, basically. People who are gonna buy products from their, from those websites are the end, end users whereas an example of b2b would be like uh, let's say let's say a, a, you know a printer making uh, organization a business which creates cross printers for businesses only which can be used across in businesses or maybe an erp software all right mukul has given an example industrial buying absolutely yes so a business selling those products which are used by businesses only all right so those are business to business now whatever the situation may be whether it's a business to business a b2b or a b2c i'm saying again 60 to 70 percent i have seen you can i mean there could be plus 10 or minus 10 for sure right those variations could be there but majority of the traffic comes through search engine so that's why we focus more on that if you have mastered search engine 
uh, I can say half of the uh, you know digital marketing activities you have you have actually you have done all right. Athanu says manufacturing companies to marketing companies need to be absolutely absolutely right. So when we talk about search engines, marketing across and search engines, there are two forms of uh, marketing done through search engines. We have spoken about that also uh, in the previous in the in the very first session if you remember. So today, let's say yesterday, what we did, we were looking for domain for our website. All right, yesterday or day before and so forth. We have typed in a keyword like buy domains, buy cheap domains, buy domain for less. What we saw that there were several domain sellers which were trying to get hold of our attention, get hold of our eyes and get hold of our, uh, yeah, as in, you know, our eyeballs and so forth. Now the ones which were there on the top in, well, with the help of ad section, they were doing paid promotion on paid promotion on uh, what do you say search engines and the ones which are there underneath the ad symbols one they are the they are the ones who are promoting their website in the unpaid section so this is the paid way of create, getting your website on the top and this is the unpaid so search engine marketing so marketing across and search engine first of all is termed as search engine marketing Anything which is marketed across through search engine is classified as search engine marketing. And uh, there are two major, the two major segments under search engine marketing. One is the paid and the other one is the unpaid. All right. The paid one is also further classified, subclassified into two a major section. Paid one. You are seeing only one of them, which is the search text ad. All right advertisements only but if you go ahead and let it try across something related to shopping stuff this is the my voice is breaking up give me a second audio is not clear just give me a second all right so this is good from here one second All right, so I'm just going to go, go ahead. So paid is divided in which two parts? Sure, I'm just going to go ahead and speak now. Let me know if in case uh, my voice broke down there. Okay, so the paid, the paid form of search engine marketing is further divided into these two forms. One is the shopping ads, shopping or the image ads, and the other one is the search text ad. The search text ad. So this is one, the text one, the text ad, and this is the other form of paid, which is the image ad, right? These are also called shopping ads. Are you clear with this? Is my voice okay now or is it still uh, creating a trouble? Still problem? One second. Give me a second. All right, so I've just made changes again to my microphone. I'm just trying to see if it works again, if it works now or not. All right, so I'm going to speak further now. Let me know if in case, guys, it's uh, it's clear or it's still there is a problem. It's better. Okay, so we'll continue further. And, okay, thanks, Satanu, and thanks, Pratik. Now, Anuj says, can we call it classified and display ad? Classified ads are absolutely different, Anuj. The ads which are submitted across on classified sites, like, uh, you know, on there's so much several classified sites, and if we talk about India specifically, OLX, Quicker, these are the uh, classified ads. So there, there's nothing, there's nothing uh, related to that. And the display ads are different. The banner image ads and so forth. Okay, the one is the shopping ad, and the other one is the text ad, the search text ad. I've got this uh, written across in my document. 
I'll still show you the cross. Let me just open across that introduction document also. I think in the introduction document also, this was being mentioned. So search engine marketing is divided across. My voice is not clear, is that again? Are you not able to hear me? It's okay. Now it's okay, okay, Anuj. So search engine. All right, so promoting across through search engine involves what all things? Promoting through search engine. Let me open across that document. The document guys which I have shared with you earlier, right? The introduction document, which is the document number one. If you'll see in that document, I have, I think, written across all these things. So search engine marketing, have a look at the fourth point over here. It says search engine marketing and search engine marketing, anything which is marketed across on search, marketed across on search engine is called search engine marketing. And these are divided into two major parts, paid and the unpaid, okay? The paid part is further divided across into, the paid part is, is further divided into the shopping ads. They're also called image ads. All right, when we say shopping there, so the other name which is given to them is Google shopping ads, image ads, or product listing ads. I think I haven't spoken about this earlier. So let me just go ahead and uh, tell more about this. So Google shopping ads, image ads, or product listing ads, these are the ads which appear in the search results when a search query is typed by a search engine user, this form of an ad basically This form of, of form of an ad, which is Google shopping ads or image ads or product listing ads, which are, so these are the different names. They're accompanied by an image of the product and its price, all right? Another thing about Google shopping ad is that these ads can be created only by e-commerce websites guys. Now when we say e-commerce websites, websites which have got, websites which have, uh, one second. All right, so websites where people can go in and purchase across anything, all right? Where the money transaction will take place. That's what we really refer across as e-commerce website. So this is one form of paid search tech paid search engine marketing, okay. The other form of paid search engine marketing is the text ad, the search text ad. Let me just go ahead and give you, help you with the screen shots, all right. So this is the example of the shopping ad. All right, so this is the shopping ad example and the search text ad if I talk about, these are the ones, right? How did I determine that these are an ad? 
with this add symbol. This add symbol basically lets us know, and this is all text, right? And this is all text. So that's why we are able to understand that this is the other form of uh, the paid search text, paid, paid ads, right? One is the shopping ads, the shop, the different names which are given across to the Google shopping ads are product listing ads, image ads, image ads onto image ads on search results, basically. Image ads on search results page. All right, so let me know in case of any question, guys, so that I can go ahead and answer that. So this is one form of advertising or marketing, sorry, not just advertising, pure marketing uh, through search engine, all right? One is the paid and the other one is the unpaid. The paid one has been uh, covered in brief by me. The paid part is further divided into the Google Shopping ads and also the search text ads. Now the unpaid search engine marketing guys is termed as search engine optimization. So it's search engine optimization, which is called SEO. All right, SEO, search engine optimization. So this one, this particular element which you're seeing right up over here. So the, the, the text, the search text results, the search text results without an ad symbol. without the ad tag, without the ad tag are referred as marketing done on search engine in an unpaid manner. Now, why exactly is that it's being called the unpaid manner? Because the advertiser over here is not paying anything to Google, okay? There's a difference between these two. Let me just go ahead and explain furthermore. Why this is, why these listing over here are the unpaid, this is this has been clubbed and classified across as the unpaid. Oh guys, can you see one thing? Can you realize one thing, the iPhone spelling, guys? Amazon is doing this mistake. Can you see this? Amazon.in forward slash mobiles. And it says I-P-O-N-E, my goodness. All right, so even, so only humans work for them. Now, non-ads are the SEOs. And uh, the difference between, the one major difference between the paid and the unpaid is that today if you want to advertise, if you and that is the paid ad, absolutely, in the paid ad, you know, they're doing this mistake. Well, this paid ad, why is it called paid? Because these advertisers who have created their ad and have got this up on the website, on the search engine results, sorry, they're paying a particular price they're paying a particular price for getting this up. And this price is uh, not going to be charged by Google on monthly basis or weekly basis or something like this. This is unlike, uh, you know, newspapers or magazines where, you know, it's the amount of money is charged across on the basis of the space and also the time period for which, or maybe the publications on which it would be shown across. In the internet space, the price is charged on per click basis. And that's the beauty of it. The moment somebody will come and see your ad, you won't get charged in this mechanism. As an advertiser, Apple or Amazon will get charged a certain amount whenever somebody will click onto their ad. There's a per click pricing. So this is that's the reason why they're also called pay-per-click ads, PPC ads. Pratik says it's a self-promotion basically without going for ads. The, 
this one are you talking about the seo listing so i mean it's not just self promotion i mean it's everybody is doing promotion right so i wouldn't say it's self promotion it's promotion definitely of uh, your website of your venture and uh, you mean to say self in the sense you're doing it yourself and not taking help of google if you're talking in that respect then yes i would agree to that and uh, in this mechanism Some you are taking help of Google to go ahead and uh, create these ads and showcase them on the top of the listings on the on the search engine result page. And whenever there is going to be a click, whenever somebody will come and see your ad and will do a click, there is going to be a per click pricing which will get deducted. All right. Whereas in the SEO space, no matter how many clicks, how many clicks these uh, you know ad these marketers are going to get for their website. there won't be even a single penny which they would be spending there won't be even a single penny which apple or amazon over here or snap deal or infibeam whichever ones are ranking over here they won't be paying even a single penny for whatever number of clicks will happen whatever number of clicks they'll receive okay and mukul says ppc only used in india not in any other country no it's used all across the globe so ppc is used all across the globe and let me just say let me just write it down the other name which is given across to these paid search engine marketing so the paid search engine marketing is basically done with the help of a tool which google offers or google's product that's called google adwords google adwords is the name of the product google adwords is the name of the product to which the paid search engine marketing has been done the other name which people say for paid search engine marketing is ppc ads all right but that's something which is not correct ppc is just a paying mechanism okay ppc is just a paying mechanism we'll talk about it so these are also called ppc ads these are also called ppc ads because uh, the paying the pricing mechanism i'm just going to read out further more chats guys in a second So these are called PPC ads. PPC stands for pay per click ads. Okay. All right. The other says with the ad symbol, your listing will come first on priority so that it can be viewed more. Well, that's a great uh, observation. That's absolutely correct. What happens is that with the paid ads, you are doing it. for several reasons one is that if you want to get your website onto the top in the search engine listings if you want your website to rank higher in the search listing in a quick or fashion then only paid ads will help you because the, the process of getting your website on the top through search engine optimization takes time another thing is that whenever there is a search term typed across in the search engine box the paid ads always comes up on the top and then only the unpaid which atanu you have been talking about so if you are looking at you know getting across your website on the top very much on the top so that you get across maximum eyeballs maximum viewers which will ultimately lead to good good percentage of you know conversions and so forth that is one great part but let me tell you not everybody is able to showcase across their ads on the top if you have run your ad if you have created your ads with the help of google adwords product which i was talking about right so google has got several products like google maps is there google drive is there similarly google adwords is one of the product through which google ads are being created so if you are looking at getting your uh, website on the top much more on the top uh, before the seo listings before the unpaid listings also then idea is definitely definitely there to go ahead and run the paid ads but but if when you want to run the paid ads you will create them you will run them it will not guarantee you your paid ad will not necessarily come on the top it can happen that initially it might not come on the first position second position or anywhere on the third or the fourth there might some four positions it might come on to the bottom also as you can see there are paid ads on the bottom also so i'll go ahead and talk further more about it that what is the paid you know the paid structure and so forth so if the idea is to go ahead and get across a website very much on the top then you have to do extra hard work and 
and what hard work you have to do we'll we'll talk about it in detail right in order to uh, get this in order to get your website very much on the top as you can see in the second page now i'm in the second page of search engine result page it is showing ad symbol so there are advertisements on the second page on the top and there are advertisements on the uh, bottom part of the second page also similarly if you'll keep moving further ahead you'll find ads more or less on the other pages also all right so idea is perfectly fine that you want your website to be there on the top much before the unpaid listings also but necessarily you might not get that there are various ways through which you can get it which we will talk about or else Atanu, that's the answer to your question Pratik says amount gets deducted on the basis of per click in the PPC model the answer to your question Pratik is yes Anu says how can a brand increase their website brand ranking see brand ranking and ad ranking are two different things when you're saying brand increase their website so how can a brand increase their website ranking when you say website ranking, in what space are you talking about, Anuj? Like in the uh, paid section or the unpaid section? Where do you want to increase your uh, website ranking? Right, so, yeah. On the basis of your input, I'll go ahead and answer your question. So there are ranking in both, both the divisions. In the unpaid division and in the paid division, in both, there is a funda of ranking. Anuj says, at present, I'm working on my company's site, neoindia.com. Only website ranking can be improved. Yes, website ranking can be improved, and either in the paid or the unpaid. Anuj, when you say you're working for your company uh, in order to improve its ranking, what exactly are you working on? Are you working on the paid or the unpaid or both? Oh, okay. So I think I should not open this website. All right, so this is an e-commerce website. That's great. And where are you guys based out of? Ludhiana. All right, Anuj, both. See, with regards to getting across your website on the top for both, there are different mechanisms. There are different mechanisms. We'll start with the paid, or with the unpaid, sorry which is SEO. How do we get our website on the top? How do we get our website ranking on the top for the unpaid? We'll talk about that first, which is search engine optimization. Once we are done with that, then we'll start with the paid section. Make sense? So we'll start with the uh, unpaid one. The basics I hope are clear in terms of the unpaid and the paid I'll speak further more with regards to give me a second. All right. So we'll start with the unpaid, which is search engine optimization. Okay, which is this one. Now, the beauty about search engine optimization is that you don't have to really pay anything to Google. No matter how many clicks happen across, you don't have to pay anything. Now, let me ask you, I think this question has been asked by me to each one of you. Let me just go ahead and ask you again. When we are starting with promoting across our website on the search engine, I want you to define what exactly search engine is for you. I think that's been already defined by you. So I, I think I don't I need to ask you. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm taking back my question. This has been already asked. So last time when we discussed what exactly we mean by search engine, search engines, you guys said that this is a place where we can go in and, uh, you know, find out answers to our questions, to our queries. And these queries or these questions could be related to anything, whether it's related to our professional staff, our work, or maybe anything else which we are looking at. Let's say even today, I want to go ahead and uh, find out the restaurant near me where I can go ahead and dine in. I would use so I use a search engine. I want to buy across something. I want to do online shopping. Then also we use across search search engines or 
uh, we would use it across for comparing stuff. We would use it across for, let's say, even I bought a uh, book, movie tickets for fun, entertainment for official purpose, for professional purpose, all, all of those things, whatever I need to want to know. We use search engines. Now, this is from the user's perspective, we define as search engines. From a technical perspective, we'll say search engines are a tool which are being created across by these technology companies like Google and so forth. In order to go ahead and uh, make money at the end of the day, which is absolutely true, these are profit making companies. And the way they are making profit is by offering value to internet users or the search engine users. The value is provided with the help of relevant results as, as an output to the in, uh, you know, in as an out, relevant results as an output. Whenever there is an input being uh, mentioned by the search engine users in this search engine box. So whenever the user is typing across a certain search query, what's happening is the search engines are doing its work at the back end and producing across these results fetching out these results of various different websites and showcasing it across. If these are found to be, uh, you know, valuable, the search engine user will keep coming back. And if the search engine user will keep coming back, the traffic onto search engines will be, would be quite massive. And this particular uh, space, which is the paid space, would get filled up more with lots of advertisers. And that's the place from where all these search engines are making money. At the end of the day, like I said, it's all about making money for them also. So the advertisers will keep coming over here if the traffic is gonna be huge. And that's what a win-win situation is what we really call us. The search engine users are also gonna be happy that they're getting across relevant results. The advertisers will be happy that they're getting across a good amount of traffic and relevant traffic. If the advertising mechanism is also being optimized by Google by the same player, right? So with that being said, there has to be a win-win situation where everybody is getting value, whether it's to do with the advertiser, whether it's to do with the search engine user, whether it's to do with the search engine as a business entity altogether, right? In this overall bandwagon. Now we'll now look as a marketer, as an advertiser who uses across this platform to connect with its end customers. One is the paid, which we'll talk about later. The, in the unpaid section, we need to understand furthermore things that these unpaid results guys are maximum 10, 10 websites which come on one single search engine result page. Now, what is a search engine result page? This is a search engine result page. So page number one, page number two, page number three, page number four, they all are being termed as SERP. All right, so this is SERP1, SERP2, SERP3. SERP stands for Search Engine Results Page. And in every one, in every search engine result page, there are 10 unpaid listings. There are 10 unpaid listings. So as you can see, in SERP number one, it's one, two, three, four, up till Snapdeal, it's four. Then it's five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, and this one is actually being counted as 10. 10 is fixed, absolutely yes, but these days I can see this particular section has come up, which is being counted as another one. So 10 is precisely fixed, okay? You go to the other one, page number two, what you can see over here. This is one, two, three, four, five, five up till paytm one, all right? and then six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10, 10 up to target. So this is the overall bifurcation. This is the overall bifurcation of a page, uh, basically. And I have told you what exactly we mean by search in the result page, right? So. Let me just see where exactly I can write down all of these so the page layout all right so this is these search engine listings
So SERP, first of all, I've answered this search engine results page. All right, it's search engine results page, guys, and the way it is like this. So these are search engine results page. All right, so I'll share across this document, guys, with each one of you, and uh, you would be in a better position to go ahead and uh, do the entire, what do you say, uh, the revision of it. Now, with, the, with every single page, guys, in every single search and then result page, you'll find the paid and the unpaid listings both, okay? Now, the unpaid listings is something which is fixed which is going to be 10 for sure in every search and result page. But with the paid listings, the number of placements are fixed, but it's up to Google whether they want to use all of those placeholders or not use uh, any one of them and so forth. Let me tell you what exactly it is. The shopping ads which comes on the top, sometimes they come on, uh, on the top, sometimes they come on the right hand side, and sometimes they come uh, with two lines basically. Over here, there's only one single line which is being occupied by the shopping ads. There could be another, uh, you know, layer which is right over here, which could be for the shopping ads. So shopping ads is something which is not that much fixed that how many, uh, you know, whether it's going to be this much space or that much space, whether it's going to be on the top two rows or just one row, or they're going to be top one row over here on the left and there's going to be one top row on the right hand side. So this is not fixed with the shopping ad. All right. So also it's not fixed that it will appear every time or not. Now comes in the text ads. The text ads are maximum four on the top. As you can see, there's only one right now. When I say maximum four, it's up to Google's uh, overall decision. So this is Google's decision, whether they want to go ahead and showcase ads on all the four placeholders or just maybe one or maybe two or maybe three or maybe all four or maybe not even any one of those. We'll study in detail when we'll do the paid section. So after the unpaid, we'll come jump onto the unpaid, right? There we'll study how Google decides that which one is going to be there. Okay, which one, uh, so which, which particular advertisement will be there on the first search and then result page, which one is going to be on the second search and result page and so forth. So that is something which would we'll talk in detail later on. And so let me just go ahead and uh, take a screenshot for this and also let you know the so the overall page structure if we talk about the page structure of uh, search engine result page of a search engine result page. It is four paid text ad maximum, four paid text ads max on the top of the page. Okay. And then we have 10 unpaid listings the unpaid listings are basically also called the SEO listings. Right, which is the SEO part. And then we have maximum three paid text ads 
on the bottom on the bottom of the search engine result page on the bottom of a on the bottom of a serp guys all right now this is the maximum and i'm just going to go ahead and read out the charts guys further so this is the page structure the serp page structure i mean to say one of the serp so you have four maximum paid ads paid text ads on the top and then the 10, 10 unpaid listings and then three maximum on the on the bottom so pratik says so it's like placement of ads depends on google google will decide where to place ads and in which rows and where on the page is it not decided by the advertiser no advertiser is not able to decide that where does he want the ad he will always try for uh, being on the top but there is always a fight mukul what happens is this spot the one which is there on the top is actually one spot and everybody wants to be there so in in any contest also there is always one winner everybody wants to be the winner but there is only one now who gets the who gets to win the prize who gets to win the contest there are several factors similarly over here with google's overall uh, you know app uh, you know the page there are a lot of parameters on the basis of which it's been decided that which particular advertiser will receive the topmost listing and which particular advertiser will receive the uh, you know second position the third position the fourth and so forth we'll talk about that in detail all right and i would say yes i think google will decide according to the ad yes google decides on the basis of several factors how well are you performing in the paid section there are quality standards and also your paying mechanism your your paying capacity which is called bidding which we'll talk in detail pratik says is it like this that who will pay more will get more so this is one part of it pratik so paying more is one part of it by just paying more you also you cannot ensure your uh, you know ad to be on the top performance also absolutely your performance which are quality standards so just to let you know in the uh, paid section we'll talk about paid in detail later on so quality standards which and also the paid uh, the pricing matters in the unpaid section the seo part it's purely the value which you are providing and there are certain search engine standards according to certain search engine standards google will decide that which particular website will be there in the top for the unpaid listings all right atanu says total 17 any picture ad uh, other than text ad separately can be there yes so in the 17 uh, atanu you are absolutely right the picture or the text uh, the picture of the image ad or the shopping ad is not included that's separate absolutely yes right the 17 is the maximum four on the top the text so this is what the text right the four paid text results then the 10 unpaid text results and then three paid text results on the bottom is a maximum google will show the 10 unpaid for sure but the four and the three paid ones on the top and on the bottom that's on google's overall decision whether they want to you know use all four and three four on the top and three on the bottom all all seven of them to be utilized or only one of them to be utilized or uh, maybe partially partial use right so pradeep is okay performance also and and that how branding is performed oh, yes absolutely that answers all your questions perfect so any further questions you have feel free to put that across again so that i can help you answer that so this is with regards to the page structure now let me tell you that there are different names guys you, you guys are good perfect thanks so there are different names to search engines guys if somebody says search engine robots bots crawlers spiders they all mean the same okay so these are the different names which are given across to search engines search engines robots bots and also spiders so these are the different names which are given across to search engines now when we talk about seo listings the unpaid listings basically even they have got different names seo listings natural listings organic listings or the unpaid listings i'm repeating again the seo listings have got also different names guys 
okay seo listings natural so they are also called natural organic listings or unpaid so if somebody says okay i'm going to be uh, my website is not there on the natural listings my website is not ranking or i want my website to be ranked across on the organic listings it means the same okay it means the same guys now okay as anush says even top four ad and page 10 may not have that impact or viewing like first page so pricing are different yes the pricing are different absolutely the pricing uh, is different and uh, it's usually lesser money whoever is paying lesser money and not following the quality standards actually gets to achieve you know, these positions on the eighth page 10th page 15th page and so forth that's why they're not on the top the thing is normally consume don't search then the consumers don't search or go till well that's what you think uh, i have so many websites where <laughs> uh, no no you don't need to be sorry about that so the percentage is very less but there are certain people there are certain people who go up till 50th page also i would say 2% 4% 5% people are there who have got all the time in the world to actually do that so uh, they, they are, so there are people like that all right so we can't help it okay so and you said there is no difference between crawler and spider no crawler and spider these are the different names and which are being uh, so usually people actually uh, you know say that okay uh, how about the crawler how about the spider and so forth they mean the same they mean the same okay All right, so hope it makes sense. So let's uh, talk further more. Now, this is something which I already told you, search engine optimization, the listing, organic listing, unpaid listing, and natural listings, and so forth. Now we'll start with the SEO part, guys, where I'll talk about the overall as I would say, it's a psychological. If you get what you're looking for, you will search anymore, else you will continue to search. Oh yes, absolutely. That's what really happens across. If you have got what you were looking for, then there's no point in going further, right? There's no point in uh, moving further ahead and looking for more, th more things. But uh, if you've got something, maybe in the very first search result, you won't. You're absolutely correct. Okay, so what we're going to do is, in order to understand this process further, guys, we'll be, I, I generally go ahead and uh, do this process of uh, giving a role play kind of thing in order to understand this part, where I tell everyone that, uh, you know, that you guys are digital marketers and you, you are working for a digital marketing agency and I am the client. So I take this role play kind of a thing and then I showcase how the digital marketing agencies do work, how digital marketing professionals do work. So me with, I have my own agency. I've been, I have worked with the agency. So I'm going to give you an overall step by, excuse me, step by step approach of how this process really works. Okay. How this process works when it comes down to search engine optimization campaign. So we'll concentrate on search engine optimization only, and I'll show you the step-by-step -step approach on how this is being done, okay? So whenever you meet a client, you have to start with requirement gathering, then you do the audit part, and then you start with keyword analysis, then you submit a proposal, all right? You submit a proposal to the client. When client will agree, then there's gonna be a purchase order being signed up. Now, you guys must be in different, uh, situations right now so let's say you know you're working for a for an organization right now but you might not really get into an agency structure right so um, and i'll keep talking about that also but at least with this example you will get an understanding on how people on the other side of the table who are specialized in internet marketing world who are internet marketing agencies what exactly they do 
So whichever side of the table you are, you will at least get an understanding of how this process works. Okay, we'll be fall. We'll be going ahead and doing all of those activities which the agency does. We'll be going ahead and uh, doing all those activities through which uh, we can optimize our website and get it onto the top and getting it on the top for the keywords which we want to. It's not just going ahead and getting a website on the top like this for any any specific keyword. It has to be the relevant keywords, keywords which will get us sales. At the end of the day, every business needs sale. Every business which wants to take on marketing activities, they're doing it for the purpose of. They do it uh, for the purpose of what do you say? Getting more business, getting more sales, and so forth. Right. So let's let's. Uh, take a 10 15 minutes break and then after that we'll uh, you know start with this process and we'll understand in detail make sense guys all right perfect so i'm going to be on mute and then we'll meet after the break guys perfect thanks
Hey guys, let's get started. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, what happened, Mukul? Uh, you, okay, Mukul, just take care of yourself, please. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Uh, there was some emergency at my end, and that's why. So we won't take the other. We'll we'll take a shorter break. This later on, longer break happened earlier. So let's get started. I uh, want to check everybody is able to hear me, right? Everybody is able to hear, right? Okay, perfect. Perfect. So with regards to search engine optimization, guys, like I was saying, we would be going ahead and taking across, uh, you know, a, a situation where we would uh, consider myself as a client, okay? A, a client as in a person who wants to get across his website optimized. And I'm going to consider each one of you to be being uh, agency or a team and so forth okay so considering that you guys are digital marketers and you have to uh, you know connect with the client who's who's looking forward to promotion of his website and specifically through search engine so what are the steps which an agency a digital marketing freelancer professional and whatsoever takes across so step number one is uh, requirement gathering so this is very important every agency goes through going uh, every agency goes through this process of taking down pending down the details of the client the, the prospect who has requested for optimizing across his website all right so I have got a specific questionnaire which I send to the client this questionnaire consists of all the major uh, questions which are to be answered across by the client so that the requirements can be gathered out and the digital marketing professional is very much uh, aware of what the client is well, what the client's business is what the client is really looking forward to in terms of achieving through this particular entire campaign till the uh, till the time objective is not clear and you know you know what the client is really looking forward to we cannot go ahead and uh, you know, perform as a digital marketer, we cannot perform across our activities. The expectations have to be very much clear. The, guy, the requirement has to be we were taken across in a perfect manner. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to open across that SC, the SEO questionnaire, which I have with me and we'll show it across to you and we'll share it as well with each one of you. Let me just open that across. Give me a second. All right. So here it is. Okay. All right, so this SEO questionnaire consists of all the basic details about the client, like what's the name of the client's business, uh, you know, the address and so forth, the website URL. Has there been any sort of uh, marketing being done for that website earlier with regards to SEO, with regards to anything else and so forth, okay? What's the name of the business, the business uh, industry type, the description about the product and service which the client is offering for us. So this, these are kind of, Question, uh, questions which you're going to be asking across to your client. Now, whether it's to do with your website also, you need to really be sure about uh, all of these questions. You need to consider yourself as a client and then try to answer this, answer them. You're working for some organization for which you are trying to help them to, trying to help them from the marketing standpoint of you. Try to get across as much details from your employer on these front, or if you're working for an agency and so forth, even in that case, you need to make sure that these details are there with you. Now, the other questions which you need to ask, ask across the client uh, is from the technical point of view also. The technical point of view, when I say majorly from the SEO point of view, have there been any sort of SEO done in the past for the website? If yes, then ask the client to share the report, share the kind of work which has been done in the past. What were the learnings? What were the achievements? So that it becomes a good input for you to carry on further your uh, SEO campaign for the client. Okay, uh, also asking the client if they have got a certain list of keywords for which they want their website to be on the top. Asking your client about uh, current status of the website, how do they really see the website is performing and also if the client has got any details about the traffic, if Google Analytics is implemented. So when Google Analytics is implemented across, you do have the you can ask the client to 
share across the panel or share across the reports which can help you to understand how much traffic at present the website is getting across from the optimization point of view all right now the other thing is like in order to uh, so from rank asking client to go ahead and um, you know describe about the product and services the unique selling propositions about the product and services because on the basis of the key core strength areas the unique selling proposition you will be able to find out the keywords you will be able to highlight those key core strength area in your content part asking the client about what geographical target are they trying to look at is it just the local audience or is it audience at a national level at a regional level at an international level as it is it at the all level any specific geographical location where they're focusing more what exactly would they like to be known for all right that's another one so what they would like to be known across for uh, you know as a best vendor and so so best manufacturer or that i mean if they have got certain niche uh, their product and service are pretty much niche niche in the sense very very unique which is very different from others they want to be known across as that so you need to really be sure about all of those so that you can promote across the website in that regards create a cross content around that then asking about other different internet marketing stuff which the client is uh, you know intending to do in future or has done in the past what uh, how would they really so how is the client defining across their customers what age group what profession what income level what you know taste and preferences of the clients are and the uh, other thing is what organizations or industries are uh, supportive or complementary to the product and services any specific competitors name so it's very important to go ahead and ask the client about competitors so that you can get an understanding of what the competitors are doing and you can if any specific competitor is doing really well that particular competitors website can be taken as a benchmark to begin with right you can go ahead and uh, look at the competitors website and see what good they have done because of which they are performing really well their their website is ranking on the top they are getting more sales they are getting more conversions and so forth right also uh, this is how i've already spoken about like what all search engine optimization so this is my questionnaire or this is my questionnaire not a sample one so i i can go ahead and share this across any specific uh, search engine optimization activity which has been done by the client in the past have they, did they undertaken any link popularity or a link building campaign i'll talk about uh, what exactly we mean by link popularity and link building this is part of search engine optimization all right i'll be sharing across this document guys with each one of you and in the end asking the client if they have any specific uh, budget in mind that this is what they are really looking for okay and any other information so this is a simple one i mean you don't have to really understand the uh i would say any anything technical over here this is purely asking the client relevant questions relevant question with regards to the business with regards to the customer with regards to their target market with regards to the work they have done in the past or they are planning to do uh, and any specific keywords we they have in mind and so forth right so these are the various questions which you need to ask the client to understand where do you uh, i mean what what sort of objective are you trying to achieve with the seo campaign and what is the business objective which the client is looking forward to achieve it at the end of the day is it just the sales is it just the brand awareness is it just the form fill ups which is the leads i mean what is the end objective that's also something which is uh, really should be uh, known to you at the end of the day everybody wants sales right i think it's a standard format i'm not sure whether this is a standard format this is something which i created uh, by looking at various of the questionnaires and i embedded across my questionnaires myself also so uh, this is for my agency basically okay i can go in and uh, so i'm not sure how what sort of a format other agencies are following i can go ahead and share this across with each one of you at the end of the session okay so hope that's clear so key requirement gathering is point number 1 and then in this kind of a situation where you have uh, got a client and you are working you are you are pitching the client the client has asked you to you know do a cross search engine optimization or maybe you are uh, or either way is right either you are pitching the client or the client is client has approached you to do seo for you whichever the scenario may be it all starts with requirement gathering right 
and Anuj says, I got the same from my existing decision. So see, but this is, there's no such thing as standard format. This is an industry where well, anyone can copy anyone's questionnaire and so forth. And the, the type of questions would be very similar. All right. There's no, there's no specified unified body which says that, okay, this is a standard format of a SEO questionnaire, which has to be followed by all the agencies. So there's no such thing as standard. It's just that the questions would have been same, right? What else can you ask the client? I mean, I, I don't think there could be plus two or three questions. There could be minus two or three questions. There could be certain changes. All right. So you, you are working Anuj for the, with an agency. That's good. So with this entire thing, which we are doing a role play, you would be able to understand what the agency does on the other side and you can cross question them according to that. Okay. Now, as the first step is being, so once the first step has been covered, the requirement has been gathered across. The second step is to go ahead and do the SEO audit. Now, what do we understand by the term audit guys? What does the word audit really means? How would you define that? Anyone? So the second step for performing the uh, search engine optimization campaign is to go ahead and do the SEO audit. And my question to each one of you is to, uh, to let me know what exactly is your understanding by the word audit. What does audit really mean? Anuj says to check each and everything related to our objective. All right, thanks Anuj, appreciate it. Atanu says, Checked and verified the result in a logical manner once again. Okay. Absolutely. Anyone else who would like to give it a try? How would you define questionnaire or sorry, uh, an audit? All right. So that's great. See, audit is done across audit in a generic term. If we talk about it's purely a check on uh, what's good and what's bad, all right? Audit is purely to examine and, 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 and the analysis, absolutely, Anucha, right? So this is all about, uh, in, in the SEO world also, we do an audit to re-examine, to see uh, what's, what's the present status like? What are the plus and what are the minus? I mean, what are the positives and what are the negatives? What is the scope of uh, area, the improvement area? Where is the, what are the key core strength areas and so forth? Now audit is something which is to be performed across as a step two, just to keep in, just to, just to uh, let the client know that where your website stands at this given point of time. The agency people or the digital marketing professional or the freelancer or whosoever is pitching the client, doesn't have to just go ahead and do the requirement gathering first but also has to do the SEO audit initially to let the, uh, let the agency know where exactly their website stands. Okay. Is it uh, doing good on certain parameters? Is it doing bad on certain parameters? There are a few things which needs to be altered upon. Now, what are those parameters? That is something we will understand later on. We'll understand with our overall activities of SEO. I'm going to go ahead and park across this particular point right now because SEO audit, is done across on multiple things, which we'll be studying across as we move further. The idea behind doing the SEO audit guys is to ensure. So what is the objective? First of all, let me just put that across the objective of doing SEO audit is to first of all, let the client know where does his website stands from the SEO perspective. That's number one. All right. So what all things are good, what all things are bad and so forth, right? The other objective is to have a benchmark report, have a benchmark report in the sense 
to refer to during the performance i'll just un make you understand this performance measurement having a benchmark report to refer to during the performance measurement process so you know let's say the uh, today let's say the search engine optimization campaign starts and there is no seo audit being done i'm taking a scenario where the search engine optimization activity gets started for a client's website but it started without an seo audit there is no seo audit report let's say okay when there is no seo audit report the let's say the uh, search engine optimization process started and it went on for a month two months three months four five six let's say six months passed by and uh, you are going to the client and saying okay mr client i have uh, carried out the seo campaign for six months and in the six months this is what the achievement is and uh, you say how are you so the client would say how are you measuring the performance the achievements so you say that uh, you know earlier when we started with your website there these were the keywords right for which your website was uh, ranking nowhere and these are the some of the link building so link building what exactly it is i'll tell you so on various parameters you are able to various matrices you are saying to the client after 6 months 6 months as in uh, starting from when the project really got started this you project really got started so you tell to the client okay these are the achievements this is where we have really come across now the client would say as per me there is no achievement there is hardly any achievement because this is something which we were already there now how would you really let the client know now know that uh, you know when you started there was nothing in the website the website was lacking across on multiple things and so forth so you need to have a benchmark report you need to have a specific report uh, which is an which i say as an audit report only which you should create not just to let the client know that these are the shortfalls on the website these are the this is how the website is standing from the seo perspective but also this report will help you to map will help you to match map and do a comparison and and you know produce across a report which would be shown to the client and that report will show the before and the after stage before and the after when i say at the day one when the campaign got started what was the website really all about where was website standing and on day let's say 180th with the, so let's say it's on one in on day number 180 when you are producing across your you know seo report when i said day, day 180 as in 180 days have passed by when you have started when you know since you have been working on the seo for the website so within 180 days what have you achieved you need to have the past report and the present report so it makes sense to go ahead and create the seo report in the beginning show it to the client and get an approval from the client that yes they agree that this is where the website is ranking right now this is where the website is uh, actually right now right so the website is standing on uh, is is uh, performing across such and such on all these parameters okay so pratik says so seo report is a final report to be prepared pres to be presented seo audit report you mean to say seo audit report are you talking about yeah seo audit report is the final report to be presented to the client a comparison that where it was on day 1 and where it is today and what all has been done absolutely yes absolutely yes seo audit report is the report basically which has to be performed on several milestones so audit report should be done on day 1 also should be done let's say after uh, on every month so if the client says okay you know for every month i need an audit report so you can have at least uh the report for uh, day 1 day 30th day 60th day 90th so every single month you are let's say producing across an audit report you are showing it to the client a, a comparison that what has been the trend what has been the changes so far is it improving is it uh diminishing and so forth when you are doing great job then uh, you know sometimes you get into uh you know in a situation fight with the client if you do not have an seo audit report of day one so it's very important that you take day one report because in many instances i have seen 
client would say this is something which we have already achieved and uh, you don't have you won't be having any proof you won't be having any proof to actually uh, share it to the client and show it to the client that okay this is where we started and this is where we are right now now what all those parameters what all those things are there which are there in the se order guys we will go ahead and understand these things as we we'll move further there's so many things which we as marketers needs to perform okay we'll understand that part those activities which needs to be performed on the basis of that your se audit report would be created automatically i mean you'll understand how the se audit is to be done across manually there are certain uh, automatic tool also which are available for se audit i'll show you those tools also as we move further and i'll also show you how to do se audit manually and uh, with the help of tools okay so i'll just mention this it is done manually and with the help of seo audit tools also all right so if there is any question guys feel free to put that across again in the chat window i hope everybody is good so far so this is how we really start this is a logical approach this is a logical approach a sort of a workflow a workflow with a search engine optimization or you can say unpaid search engine marketing campaign and it says can we check as you ordered without any help from the agency yes you can do that so once you'll understand once you'll learn anuj you will be able to go ahead and uh, create across an sc audit report yourself for your website without any any help from the agency all right since i am teaching you how to be really uh, a person of an agency right how can you really go ahead and uh, work on to a website the same way an agency people do right the way agency people work across on a website on the on the same basis we're going to be uh, implementing the things okay so let's move further keyword analysis for no just says performance of keywords matter for showing result performance of keywords matters for showing results to client but that cannot be the whole parameter absolutely right anuja you are right that's a good one see uh, when it comes down to measuring the performance performance can be measured on multiple factors like you are saying that okay it can be measured across on the ranking it can be measured across on several other parameters which are the small little stuff small little parameters which we will definitely understand in detail things like you know the on page off page optimization and there are several things underneath on page off page which i'll talk about you have said it correctly anuja all right so now the third step guys once we have done with the requirement gathering and the seo audit the third step one second all right now the third step is keyword analysis now keywords what do we understand by the term keyword guys how would you define keywords now this is the third step which any agency people which digital marketers really do they go with keyword analysis now i i'm asking for your understanding about the word keywords anuja says any search term which tied on the search engine for getting specific results all right thanks anuja anyone else who want to give it a try all right so anuja says keyword is a word of a word or a pair of words which explain explain or elaborate the objectives in a shortest manner all right that's great yes i do agree to that anyone else what exactly is your understanding about keywords or it says keywords means any specific thing word that ww that 
we want, I'm sorry, okay, that we want to highlight. And uh, Pratik said specific words that can directly target the consumer's mind. Yes, Pratik, that's a great one. Consumer's mind, what consumer must be thinking while shopping, absolutely. If the keywords are said right. All of you have said it correctly, guys. I mean, uh, I'll go ahead and rephrase these things again. You have said it perfectly right. Now, there are two things. There are two things, guys, which I would like to pinpoint. One is called a search query and the other is called a keyword. Okay, Pratik says if the keywords are set right, it can target consumers. Absolutely right. Now, there are two sides of the coin. There are the two people in this entire uh, you know, bandwagon, in this entire scenario of SEO. One is the advertiser, all right? And the other person is the ta potential customer who is typing in across certain words in the search engine bar. Now today, if I am looking for, I'm taking the same example, I'm looking for an iPhone 7 for myself, I'm going ahead and uh, doing a search on the search engine. So what I'm doing is I am pointing out, I am I'm, uh, putting across those words which I have in my mind in the search engine bar. So uh, what I have in my mind is uh, a requirement for iPhone 7. I want to buy that, okay? And uh, when I want to buy an iPhone, I have got, uh, I have actually, uh, you know, taken across my, I've translated my entire requirement into words and these words have been put in across in the search engine bar. And these words, when I as a consumer have translated these words into search engine bar, they are actually called search query. So this is my query. So this is how we define across as a search query. Now, this is one thing which is called a search query. All right, so let me just go ahead and uh, put it across in the screenshot again. This is a search query. Why exactly are we calling this a search query? Search query is the word, the words which are, which are typed by search engine users. Users are consumers, basically in the search engine bar. In the search engine bar or box, whatever you want to call that. Now, this is not a call, this is not called a keyword, okay? Keyword is something which is referred as the words which the advertiser choose. Now, what the advertiser is going to choose and what the search engine user is going to type that has to be same okay that is something which it had which has to be same and that's the role of the internet marketer to go ahead and uh, find out those words find out those search queries which are typed in across by their potential customers okay now today i'm selling let's say iphone 7 and i'm trying to promote across i'm trying to optimize my website for a keyword called let's say iphone 7 now, people who want to buy iPhone 7, I am trying to catch hold of their attention. I am assuming that the audience who are looking for buying iPhone 7, they're typing in the keyword iPhone 7. I keep on, let's say, optimizing my website for the word iPhone 7. After six months, 10 months, 12 months, I realize that, you know, I've done good amount of effort. My website is also ranking, but uh, my website is ranking for that keyword for which I'm making effort. I'm getting traffic also, but I'm not getting sales. So if I'm not getting sales, it probably just because of the fact that I have not targeted the right set of words, which the potential customer, which the customer who are actually looking for buying iPhone 7 are typing in. People who are looking for buying iPhone 7, maybe they're typing in keywords like buy iPhone 7, such and such, all right? So all in all, I'm in short if I try to tell you we as digital marketers have to make sure, we have to make sure that we select the right set of keywords and I'm gonna go ahead and perform this activity right in front of you with the help of an example and that activity total is called keyword analysis. 
with the help of this activity called keyword analysis we would be making sure that the words which are typed in across in the search engine bar all right by the potential customers are known to us okay they are known to us i mean they we are able to find them up we are able to we as search we as the digital marketers we are able to find across those search queries and and uh, insert them across as well keywords so keywords and search query are two different things words search query if i talk about again i'm, I'm repeating again words that are typed by search engine user in the search engine box and keywords are the words that the seo professional targets for ranking their website up okay so all in all we have to ensure that the keywords which we choose are the ones keywords are the so whatever keywords which we choose are the ones that are being target that are being typed in across by our potential customers Pratik says while searching any phone, uh, you're saying if the keywords are set right, it can target customers. Ram, right? So uh, various other uh, internal things. So people who are looking for buying product, they're pretty sure about what exactly they want to buy, right? I'm absolutely, like the camera pixels, the customers might type in like the the overall the space, right? The the space when I say the data space and so forth. Pratik says while searching any phone, so. What would be the keywords in case of iPhone? We can type. So, for an example, buy iPhone seven. Uh, let's say uh, one twenty eight GB rose gold. I mean, these are the kind of keywords which people specifically try to type in when they are looking for a for a phone. So, there is a process which I'm going to tell you through which we would be first of all finding a first uh, list of keywords which we would aim for. when we will start optimizing our website for all those first list of keywords then there would be more uh, there would be more observations there would be more learnings you know those learnings would be like we would see that you know out of let's say 50 keywords which i have chosen uh, i am i'm getting across conversions only for 15 or 20 of them out of 50 only 20 keywords are giving me conversions that's 30 are doing well in terms of the ranking but i'm not getting conversions so it might be a time it might really give you an understanding that okay now it's time to replace those 30 keywords and experiment with the other one in internet marketing there's a lot of experimentation guys there's a lot of hit and trial which which is uh, used across if you if you're not ready to do those hit and trial if you're not ready to do those experimentations you might not be able to go ahead and uh, you know come to the end conclusion and uh, will not be able to win that particular battle of achieving your objective So there are a lot of uh, there. There would be a lot of rounds. There would be a lot of uh, failures in between in in the initial phase, and which is absolutely okay. And that's healthy. Failure is healthy. Trust me. The more you're gonna fail, uh, more you're getting closer to your, uh, you know, more you're getting closer to the success, right? And the path to success is always through failure. There's there's no doubt about that. If you're gonna you know succeed in the very first go then definitely you have really chosen something which is uh worth achieving all right so let's move forward and anuj says he was uh basically for ranking their website up to get sale or fulfilling our objective yes absolutely all right guys just give me one second i'm just going to be on hold for a minute for for, for mute for one minute just give me one minute all right so that's the difference between the search query guys and the keywords okay now within uh, when we talk about google uh, paid ads also guys in that also the process works the same keyword analysis is something which is 
of an essential thing that is to be done across for sure if you're not performing keyword analysis in the paid ads part also then uh, the, that same mismatch will happen you might be targeting some other keywords what uh, in in you know and and the words which are typed in across by potential customers are something different so we will we'll go ahead and perform across this task guys uh, the thing is how we are, as a marketing can identify what customer is searching and what keywords a particular company's website or brand might have written earlier so can we check that see uh, what is your what are your there are tools absolutely that's what i'm trying to show you right now but when there's another section of your question pratik like uh, how can we identify what customer is searching that is through a tool which i'll show you when you're saying what keywords a particular company's website or brand might have written earlier when what they have written earlier is something which they can only say but if when it comes down to looking at your competitors website what exactly keywords they are uh, targeting that is also uh, there is there's a way through uh, which we can find that out also all right so we we'll, i'll i'll go ahead and talk about that we'll as we'll move further so in order to do a keyword analysis process guys what we'll do right now is we'll take an example we'll take an example of a specific website now what website shall we take okay so as you can see i'm taking across this website which is never india and i'm taking across one section of it so for every section you would have to do keyword analysis guys there's one section which is called kids wear all right and underneath the kids wear there are uh there are basic there may other categories like kids thermal all right kids t-shirts all right track suits for kids and so forth now depending upon these categories we will be using across the keyword planner tool to get across our keyword analysis being done now keyword planner is the name of a tool which google provides across guys okay so let me just go ahead and so uh, i'm just going to go ahead and open across this tool for google.com so just go to google.com and type in across google keyword planner that's the name of the tool guys it's called keyword planner okay so the moment you're going to type in across keyword planner you will find this right up over here and hey go this is the url guys now majorly it's provided across by google guys for uh, the paid ads but we use it across for search engine optimization for the unpaid also because more or less uh, it they are there actually setting a base this particular tool helps us to identify to understand first of all various different uh, permutation and combinations of words so various different permutation combination of various different words uh, which people type in and not just that but it gives us more information that which all words are typed in and at what frequency in the search engine bar and what is the overall competition now i'll talk about competition part and so forth so there are several things which we'll look into it so you need to go ahead and open this tool first and like i said i'm taking across example of this website which is called neva india and one of the section and i'm also saying it again that you would have to perform the keyword analysis for all of your different uh, categories you know uh, again and again you might have to perform this task on repeated basis so what i'm doing is i'm clicking on to sign in to adwords okay you would need across a gmail account to get started with it
All right, so I was just grabbing my phone so that if there is a SMS, I can go ahead and verify it. But I can see this is not going to give me the SMS. All right, so you just have to log into the Keyword Planner tool. I've given you the URL. Now, this is the first screen which you're going to see when you're going to start with the Keyword Planner. Are you guys able to see the screen? Do you want to go ahead and uh, log in to open this tool? All right, Janet says yes. How about others? All right, thanks, Anuja and Anuj for confirming. How about others? Atanu and Pratik, are you also able to see the screen? Uh, when I say see the screen, as in when you have logged in yourself into Keyword Planner with your Gmail. All right. Okay, you're doing it. All right, so let me know once you each one of you are there on the screen. What we'll be doing is we'll be performing this task of keyword analysis. Okay, perfect. Now there are several options, guys. Uh, I was telling you why is it that we are using this tool and what exactly this tool provides us. Let me just go ahead and... So why exactly are we doing this analysis? We're doing this keyword analysis to ensure we as digital marketing professionals We as digital marketing professionals would be carrying out this approach So we will carry out this approach to ensure that the keywords selected right the keywords selected by us one second. as marketers are same as what our potential customers usually type in the search engine when they are looking to buy a product or service which we sell or offer all right so this is the objective of doing keyword analysis uh, we have already spoken about this we have i made you understand search query i made you understand what keyword is basically the definition of keyword now what does this tool so this is called google keyword planner and and what is the what exactly this tool gives all right so to answer this question what this tool is going to really help us with this okay uh, i've already written this across guys uh, i don't need to do this so this planner tool basically is first of all going to give us across the ideas. When I say ideas as in the ideas related to various different search terms, 
ideas where ideas related to various search queries which are typed in in the google search bar so this is this will give us the data what all search queries are typed in in the google search bar for every search query which is going to be suggested so there are various different search queries which would be suggested or right, so it's get ideas various search queries which are typed in in the google search bar would be there plus these along with these suggested search queries there would be more things which is like the search frequency search frequency in other words is like average on average uh, basis on on an average what is the average number on monthly basis what is the average number of times this all of these search queries are typed in we'll get this we'll get this another thing so one is the ideas of various search queries plus the number of times these search queries are typed in across on monthly basis we'll get that data with this particular tool and the third thing is for every search query which is suggested or listed by the planner tool this third thing which we'll get is which is the competition part competition which it means is it will provide an understanding of how competitive or how much in demand all these search queries are how many websites are actually trying to get themselves on the top of these so it's not going to be our website only which will be eyeing for uh, these search queries which would be you know uh, looking to get across this uh, get across their our website on the top there're going to be more things there're going to be more websites all right so hope that helps let me just go ahead and just format this a bit give me a second all right so let me just show you this let me just show you what exactly it's the tool is going to do so these three things which i have spoken theoretically i'm showing you practically now step 1 once you have got this screen when you log into google adwords go ahead and click on to this particular first tab it says search for new keywords using a phrase website or category all right the moment you have clicked over here then it's going to ask you for to fill up these things number 1 it says your product or service all right so let's say your product or service in this case our product is kids wear kids thermals kids t-shirts i'm taking a couple of them okay kids wear kids thermals that's the one how do you spell that thermals thermals all right kids thermals and the third thing which i was saying is i think kids t-shirts or i think okay just to keep it simple let's let's do for these kids wear kids thermal okay kids t-shirts also i'm taking you can go in and insert across more more uh, categories also like all of these can be put in across even these can be put in across in one single go it's just that the more you're going to do the more you're going to do uh, it will be it will take much more time anuj you're saying you showing a different screen i'm sorry where is it are you confirm that you are actually on the same page uh, let me know what is the different screen you are able to see the color is blue i'm sorry give me your google id i'll just go in and set it up for you okay give me a second i'm just going to go ahead and help up help out so you're not seeing the google keyword planner screen you're saying right so what you have to do is you have to type in first of all google keyword planner so this was the url which i have shared with you right you have to give me across the password also for this and you can change it at a later stage all right so you have to sign in to your google adwords
All right, so it's the same. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. This is some other login. So Anuj, you would have to give me across your password also in case I have to check whether you're getting some different screen. Was everybody there on the same page, on the same screen? In case, guys, you were not able to get the same screen, you're getting something else, I'm just going ahead and showing it for Anuj. Maybe you can, you might be also getting across the same screen, so you will get an understanding of how to reach that keyword planner screen. Yeah, you have to sign in right at the room. I know this is wrong password. All right, so uh, what section should I select? Get a phone call with a verification code, confirm your recovery email. Wait, 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 wait uh, let's, let's do it together. Let's do it together. So any of them? So I'm, I know not everybody will be getting the same screen. That's why uh, I kept on asking everybody that if you're seeing the same screen, if not, let me help you. So I can see Anuj hasn't got the same screen. That's why I'm opening across his account right now and showing you how to get to that keyword planner screen, okay? Right, Anuj, I'm waiting for you to answer this particular thing, please, so that we can move forward a bit fast. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, so when you're going to log into your Google Keyword Planner, you might not get across. Oh, my goodness. Why have you gone ahead and, Anuj, why did you went ahead and... So you've actually, you know, gone ahead and done this process of setting up about your business details. You know, in that first screen only, you have to click on to a tab called Skip Your Guided Setup. Now you won't be able to go back. That's the bad part about Google AdWords. When you're not sure about something, you should not do it. All right, so this has been done. So now you won't be able to go to that part. Mm. Do you have any other Google account through which I can show you, Anuj? Any other, any other credentials if you want to share with me through which I can share it? to which I can show it to you. Because you have already uh, gone ahead and performed this task and there's no looking back. Till the time you won't give across, you know, payment to Google, Google will not actually show you this. All right, so I hope you haven't tried out 
don't try it out yourself if you're not sure about something please okay guys i'm logging into some other account and showing how do we really go ahead and reach across to that particular screen which is of keyword planner okay give me the password for this particular email address anuj please so that i can go ahead and log in anuj.19 at gmail.com so the password is All right, this is saying wrong password. Can you give me another one, please? Okay, you want me to, please give me one workable email address and a password, please. I'm just logging into another one. So you should not, not have given me the previous one, which... Okay, I would request you to make it quick, please. Please make it quick, Anuj. Give me something which is in workable condition. Now, what's the password for this one, please? All right, I hope you are typing in the password. Okay. All right, so I hope you haven't really tried with this account. With this account, okay. Now guys, absolutely you haven't tried with this one. Let me tell you, when you are logging into Keyword Planner, I hope everybody has tried logging into Keyword Planner. If you have, you're getting the same page. Perfect, I'll tell you what needs to be done over here. If you guys are getting this page, guys. If you're getting up, if you're getting this page, now let me tell you what needs to be done. You have to click onto this section called Skip the Guided Setup, okay? If you're getting this page, if you're getting this screen, you have to click on to skip the guided setup. If this is the first screen which you're getting to see, All right, so if you're not able to land it directly to the Keyword Planner page, you'll get this page, right? On this page, you have to click onto this tab called Skip the Guided Setup, guys, okay? All right, so what you have to do, step one, is to open this URL. And uh, 
if you're getting this screen, then you have to click on to skip the guided setup. So that's what we're going to do right now. Skip the guided setting you have to click on. The moment you're going to click on to this, you will get this screen, guys. Okay, this is the screen number two, which you will get. You have to enter across. This is screen two. Okay. Screen two before you land onto keyword planner page. Okay, now over here you have to set up, just fill out all these details, guys. Okay. All right, so that's what you have to do with screen number two. That's what I'm doing. I'm clicking on to save and continue. All right, so all of you are at this. So done with screen two, and you have clicked on to save and continue. Perfect. Now, once you're going to move ahead, now you'll be able to find out the keyword analysis tool. Let me just go ahead and show it to you. All right, so sometimes this particular tool takes time, guys. Okay, now this is the screen number three. In this screen number three, what you have to do is you have to click, nothing is coming on the screen. Just wait for a second. It will come for sure. Or maybe just you can do a refresh. Let me know once you are able to get this screen, guys. The screen number three, once you're there on the screen, let me know. Your same page, all right. You're there on the So Atano says I'm on the same screen, page three, all right. That's great. And I'm using Anuj's account. And how about other? Anuja, Pratik, let me know once you're there. No problem, Pratik. It'll, it'll take just a few more seconds. Anuja, how about you? Are you there on the screen? Okay, you're there on the keywords panel. That's great. All right, so Pratik, you should be there in a while. Let me tell you. On screen number three, you have to click over here in the tool section. Okay. This is screen number three. And in the screen number three, what you have to do is you have to select the tool section in the keyword planner. So this is going to be tools and after that tools, it's keyword panel.
All right, so hope that helps. And Pradeep, you're on the same page right now. Perfect, that's great. This was step three and then All right, so once you're there on this particular screen, guys, which is this one, like I said, click on the keyword panel. I'm repeating again, once you're there on the screen, go to tools section, click on the tools and there's gonna be a drop down. click on the keyword planner, all right? Click right up over here. All right, so it's gonna take some time to load up. Now, I believe you guys are all on the same page, right? Where we can go ahead and, perfect. Perfect guys, so loading keyword plan, all right, that's not a problem. So what we have to do over here is, follow that same process which I was doing. So Anuj, I'm logging out from your, thanks so much Anuj for sharing across your details. You can anytime change your passwords, please. Whatever passwords which you have shared in the, within the, within the session, please to ensure that you change that later on and thanks for sharing it. I hope everybody is there on the same page now because of all that and we would be now Using that same example, I was mentioning that for a particular website, we can do the keyword analysis in one single go, but just to keep it short and simple as of now and understand the process first, I'm choosing across only a couple of categories, okay? This can be as big keyword analysis as we want, or it can be as short and simple which we want. I'm keeping it short and simple right now. I've chosen only two sections or two basic categories of this particular website. I've written kids wear, kids thermal, which one and the same thing I believe. Kids wear is the major category and kids thermal is the uh, internal subcategory. That's what I mean, I feel like. Now, the other thing which it's asking for is the landing page. Now, if I'm not doing for the entire website, if I would have done it for the entire website, I would mention the URL of my website, on the home page basically. But since I'm doing it for one single section, which is the kids section, I'll go ahead and click on to kids where, and the URL which will come on the top. All right, so there's no URL for this. Okay, strange, okay. But not a problem, I'll go ahead and click on to kids thermals. All right, so the moment I've clicked on to kids thermals, this is the URL, guys. This web page address, this particular address which you're seeing on the top, kids thermal, I'm gonna go ahead and paste it right over here. So I've copied that and I'm pasting it right up over here. Now the next thing guys is the category section. Now it's upon us to go ahead and select the right category. Now these categories guys uh, are predefined by Google. They're predefined by Google. We can not create across any category of our on our own. So I'm clicking onto this drop down arrow button and there are so many predefined categories we have to choose across any category which is matching to our uh, product or service. If, if you don't find something, then you can find, you know, select across the most closest one if possible. And still, if you do not find any closest one also, then you can leave it blank. So I can see apparel is one, arts and entertainment in this particular case, which is the kids part. I don't see anything related to kids over here. Retailers and general merchandise, maybe I think this is a very much generic one. It's a shopping portal and a search engine. I think retailers and general merchandise is something which will, which is the closest one which will go with it. So I've selected the product category to be retailers and general merchandise in this case. You can go ahead and select the category for your own respective examples on your own, the one which is matching pretty closely. Pratik said these categories are predefined by Google on the basis of different search queries made by the 
different consumers, the answer is yes. And say so we cannot type any new query over here as it's predefined. The answer is yes, right? The answer is yes to both of your questions. That's correct, Pratik. You have got it correctly. All right. So with that being said, we have got the product category being mentioned, and now uh, which specific targeting area are we looking at? Are we looking at United States or India and so forth? Which particular region? We can even define across uh, a specific city. If I'm targeting only specific city, I can type that also. I'm assuming, let's say I'm targeting entire India from here, from, from this website. I want to optimize my website for only Indian audience to begin with. I can type in that country. Let's say now we can select more than one location also, absolutely. So let's say I want to go ahead and uh, select across only one specific city. I can do that also. I can do it for just Ludhiana if I want. City, I can do it for a state also. Okay. Punjab, uh, the India one, not the Pakistan one. All right. So that's upon us. I can go ahead and. Uh, so, what will happen once we enter across all these details, the search term frequency would be shown across on for those specific regions only. All right. So, for that regions only, it would be shown. I'm going ahead and removing. The state and city which I have entered, I'm selecting India as a in whole. And uh, the rest of the things you can go ahead and uh, ignore at this point of time. We don't need to do anything with this because these keyword filters and so forth, they are actually used across in the page section majorly. Now, date range, let it be default. I want data. We want data for the last 12 months. That's more than enough. Now, what we'll be doing is we'll be going ahead and clicking on to get ideas, right? Okay, click on to get ideas. Right now, the moment we have clicked on to get ideas, what we can see is two tabs over here, ad group ideas and keyword ideas. So ignore ad group ideas. That's something which we won't be working on right now. Keyword ideas, let this be in. And these are the three keywords which I have typed in from my side, and there is average monthly searches mentioned, competition mentioned. Now ignore the other parts, suggested bid and so forth, because this bid part is something which is going to be used across in the paid section. So as we move further down, we can see so many suggestions. Now I told you this keyword planner tool is going to give us, give us across, first of all, a lot of search query suggestions, first of all. And here are the various different search query sessions. That's number one for, uh, input which this particular search, uh, this particular keyword planner tool is giving us. Okay. Online shopping sites for kids where people are typing in, people are typing online shopping for kids, kids online shopping, online shopping India, MNS thermals, kids shopping, and so forth. Now, the second column which you're seeing over here is giving us an approximate uh, number of times this particular all these search terms are typed in boys t-shirts have got a monthly searches in India 1000 to 10,000 in, in a month all right whereas online shopping for kids where is 100 to 1000 only what it means is this one is much bigger than this if you talk about online shopping India the number of times the average monthly searches is Minimum 10,000, maximum 100,000. 100, all right. So we're getting all this data. And if you'll see the total number of keywords which have been suggested over here are it's only 13. No, I'm sorry. There are only 13. Key oh, oh, sorry. All right, so I think there are only 13 keywords which have been suggested over here. We can go ahead and download. Since we have taken a smaller lot, I've just taken one of the kids section only. That's why the suggested keywords are also pretty less. I could have typed in more categories and more set of keyword lists could have been there. Now, the next step in order to do the keyword analysis is to go ahead and play around with these uh, you know, data which is right up over here and what we'll do in order to play around with that data and come up with that final list of keywords and so forth.
we'll be doing a step which is called now we'll be going ahead and downloading this entire so i'm clicking on to download ideas and that to in an excel sheet so i'm i'm showing again we'll go ahead and click on to download ideas and it will say it'll, it'll give us so many options we can go ahead and select excel csv and click on download guys now there are 13 keywords which have been provided across as the suggestions so it says your download is available you can say file you can click on to it and here's the final file let's go ahead and open this all right so the excel sheet is right now going to be in front of us and here you go i hope everybody is able to see the screen the excel file i'm just going to go ahead and zoom in further okay here's the excel file guys which keyword planner has given us and in this particular excel file i'm going to go ahead and first of all remove across the uh, those data columns which are not needed so the first one add group one i'm going ahead and deleting that currency column i don't need this also and all of these also so i need just keywords average monthly searches and competition rest i don't need to to carry out the entire keyword analysis process so what you can see there are three columns guys which are available right now and there are 13 keywords which have been given across as suggestions all right now there are uh, going to be three major parameters on the basis of which we'll finalize on the set of keywords guys for which we will start optimizing our website i know i told you that you know the search query and the keyword there's a difference in these two and as a marketer we have to uh, really optimize our website for those set of keywords only for those set of search queries only which will help us to get across conversions at the end of the day there's no point in getting across just traffic and no conversions also and there is no point in you know ranking across our website for those keywords which are not leading to sales right and so forth at the end of the day we as marketers wants to ensure that there is that there is a sale there is profit at the end of the day because if there are no profits then then you know the business won't run and so forth so in order to get those list of final keywords which will help us to get profits we cannot arrive at the final list of keywords which will give us profit straight away we'll have a sound judgment first of all on the basis of our certain parameters and sound judgment we'll come up with an initial keyword list we'll start optimizing our website for that initial keyword list once the results will start coming up we'll observe and then we'll alter our keywords again further keyword analysis is not just a one step one uh, it's a it's not a process which will happen only once we can alter our keywords guys at a later stage also later stage in the sense when our uh, website would be running when our campaign would be running and we would find that okay we have to make further more alterations to it alterations in terms of the keywords if there are certain keywords which are not bringing us results we might replace them with some more new all right the ones which will work we'll keep them as it is we'll keep them as it is now i'll i'll come up to that i'll come up to the competition part what is monthly searches and so forth okay okay just 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 hold on so whatever i was trying to explain you i hope that part is pretty much clear first and then now i'm going to come up on those three parameters and we'll talk about the competition part also there are three parameters on the basis of which we're going to go ahead and finalize the set of keywords the these parameters are first of all the first parameter is the the keyword on the basis of which we're going to finalize upon is the relevancy to the business one second 
one is relevancy to the business first parameter the second one is the average monthly searches would be looked at and in the average monthly searches which we have uh, something which we're going to be looking at is the keywords with monthly searches on the higher side so you have to look for those keywords which are a bit decent in terms of average monthly searches which people do do search at least at a decent level i mean i'm saying it high doesn't mean it has to be high only it can be medium also we have to do again some sound judgment on the basis of the situation and then competition when we say competition competition really means that uh, how many websites are trying to rank themselves in the search engine results for the same set of search terms okay so when we'll be looking at the competition part we will be looking for keywords which are low on the competition okay now this is measured on a scale of 0 to 1 the competition is measured on a scale of 0 to 1 okay and 0 reflects zero being the least competitive zero being least and one being highest one being high competitive one represents high competitive okay zero means low competition and one being high so we'll be going ahead and filtering out the keywords guys on the basis of these three parameters and it just says this would be difficult to choose low competition and high yes there's always uh, what do you say a, a fight where you know keywords with high competition or well, keywords with low competition have got higher monthly searches the there's always uh what do you say what do you call that the relationship is like that the competition a keyword with higher competition will always have higher monthly searches and keyword with lower competition will have lower monthly searches but we have to do our sound judgment and there are going to be situations in certain businesses in there are certain niche businesses where there pretty easy pretty easily you will find out keywords with higher monthly searches and lower competition people are searching for certain keywords in good numbers but the but the advertisers on the other side which are uh, you know eyeing uh, them or which are targeting them for for optimizing are less that happens way too much in niche businesses very unique businesses but a business like this which is kids wear and so forth you won't find you won't find keywords which are uh, you know good on the monthly searches and lower on the competition in this example i don't see even a single keyword all of the keywords over here are competitive so you don't have a choice you have to then go with the ones which are more relevant and uh, okay on both the parameters so i think we have to settle down for in this example so i've taken an example where we don't have much of a choice because all the comp the competition for all the keywords which i can see is 0.99 0.98 and 1 that's a common the only keyword which has got lower competition is 0.29 and its monthly searches is a uh, point or is 10 to 100 now just have a look at keyword number 11 i'm just telling you a difference between keyword number 11 and keyword number 7 if you have been given across a choice to go in and find you know select keyword number 11 and keyword number 7 and keyword number 11 so keyword number 7 and keyword number 11 have got similar monthly searches but 11 would be preferred more because it has got lower competition provided it is relevant to the business if you know this website is selling mns thermals then only this keyword will first of all get uh, you know accepted once it's been accepted from the relevancy point of view and let's say you've got you got a choice or maybe you can select any one of these 7 and 11 you can see that 10 to 100 is the monthly searches for this 10 to 100 is monthly searches for this the amount of people who are trying to get them get their website on the top for number 7 keyword is uh, 
it's very massive. The competition is 0.99 on a scale of zero to one. And the question, the keyword number 11 is 0 0.29. Now, this is just one of the scenarios. There would be further more examples. There, there can be several more things which you can really come up with. All you have to do is you have to do a sound judgment in, in all those parameters. First thing is make sure all the keywords which you are selecting for your website have to be have to be what do you say relevant to the business now let's say kids t-shirts kids thermals kids wear these are definitely uh, relevant to the business so you can go ahead and select these for sure let's say online boys t-shirts uh, maybe won't really go for the kids section so let's say my website is purely about kids i'm assuming that so maybe this particular will not really this particular keyword will not go with the relevancy point of view because I'm selling only kids part. If somebody is looking for kids, uh, you know, he has to go ahead and uh, mention this. I mean, I'm going to concentrate on you on those traffic, which are way too focused. Anybody who's typing in boys t-shirt might be looking for a boy, which is of that age group, which uh, I'm not selling my products right for. So I'm not going to go ahead and uh, approve this keyword from the relevancy point of view if, if I'm just selling kids stuff. So online shopping for kids wear, online shopping sites for kids wear, online shopping for kids, kids online shopping. These all would be good. Online shopping India will also not go since I'm, I have a website which is only related to kids, let's say. So online shopping India will also not go. Kids shopping, boys t-shirts also I will not go up with. All right. In 11th, it's written MNS thermals. I'm not sure um, MNS would be, um, let's say, for a specific brand. So let's say even this is not relevant. So yes, I think it's MNS. I'm I'm also not sure. People are typing in this could be Marks and Spencer. Maybe I'm just assuming is this Mark and Spencer's thermals or some other thing. It's this could be a brand. This could be a type of a thermal. All right. So on the basis of let's say relevancy to the business, I have, you know deleted certain keywords like one, two, three, four, and so forth. I've got four keywords being deleted. Now, as per the keyword list, we had 13 keywords in total. Okay, so we had 13 keywords to begin with. When we had 13 keywords to begin with, on the basis of relevancy, we have deleted nine of them, sorry, four of them, and now we have got, we are left with nine. Now let's say on the basis of nine. So we started with 13 as per these parameter number one, we are now left with nine keywords. Now on the basis of the parameter number two and three, let's say we are in the end left with six keywords guys. Okay. Six keywords, which are going to be focusing across on couple of pages, which is the kids thermal and the kids wear and so forth. Now I've got keywords for my these pages basically. Okay. Now we are not going to be very strict on to that. Okay. These keywords have to be used. We can run this approach again with certain more, uh, you know, certain more inputs being done. That's absolutely fine. But I've given you a gist of it. How do you really look into it? And I do understand that the, from the competition in the, uh, monthly searches point of view for most of the competitive categories you will never find keywords which are higher on monthly searches and lower on competition for a very generic business for a very generic business it's going to be difficult but for not so generic business you will be lucky enough to get across keywords which you can prioritize which are easy to rank because the competition would be less and uh, they would be good on the monthly searches, which will help you to get across more visitors that way. But make sure you do look in from the relevancy point of view, because if you're not seeing keywords from the relevancy to the business point of view, there's no point in ranking your website for a keyword, which will not give you a customer that will get converted. Right? So the relevancy part has to be there. Now on the basis of this entire approach, you have come up with six keywords. Now you're going to go ahead and map up these keywords to the pages where for which you want to rank it up. Okay, the next step guys is called keyword mapping. 
do you want me to take that process further ahead the keyword mapping process or do you want to do it next saturday let me know the keyword mapping if in case you are able to uh, consume in this content i can move further with keyword mapping or in case you are good with it uh, we can we can take it across on next saturday also keyword mapping is a process let's continue okay perfect keyword mapping is a process where have okay perfect keyword mapping is a process where we would be going ahead and mapping that this all these keywords which we have selected one second so the final list of keywords which we have selected is once again let me just go and open across one of my keyword mapping excel sheet which will help you to get better better understanding all right so as the name says mapping guys mapping means the keywords which you have selected you are mapping it across to the url of your website okay now the example which i have taken i have taken across only couple of pages for which we were doing keyword analysis when you will be doing it across uh, for your entire website this keyword mapping process would make much more sense definitely the time which you will invest across is going to be much more you will be looking at every single keyword and you will be looking at keywords from all the three major parameters once you will be able to find out the final list of keywords you have to go ahead and map across those keywords to all the excuse me all the different pages of your website now there is this one single uh, biggest misconception which people have and uh, which is about uh, you know optimizing your website that misconception is that many people think that whenever we optimize our website we optimize the home page which is not true we have to optimize every single web page of our website what is a website made up of website is made up up of website is made up of made up of several different web pages right one website might be uh, a collection of 10000 web pages another website may be a collection another website might be a collection of uh, 100 different web pages and so forth whenever we are doing optimization of a website we have to ensure that there is equal there is equal uh, what do you say weightage or uh, burden given across on every web page all right when i say burden in the sense it should not happen that let's say 50 keywords which you have selected you are trying to get across your home page of your website to be ranked across for all the 50 keywords which you have chosen that should not be the case many people think it this way which is not correct whenever you are whenever you have finalized a set of keywords guys you have to ensure that these keywords are split it across throughout your website and split it in a very uh, logical manner if there is a keyword related to let's say you know kids thermals the kid thermals keywords should be targeted for the kids thermal web page any specific keyword which is related to boys track band so you know all in all every single page has to be optimized for its relevant keyword that's what you don't have to put in across you know burden of uh, optimization of your seo activities only selected pages you cannot just go and uh, put across button on just home page or maybe just the home page and the category page it has to be split it across the seo activities have to be performed for every single web page on your website and that's what keyword mapping is all about with keyword mapping what exactly we are doing is let me just open the keyword mapping sheet so what keyword with keyword mapping what we do is we first of all go ahead and so this is an excel sheet guys which i can share it with you i have created this template basically through which keyword analysis is done across in a very simple and easy fashion while doing keyword mapping 
you have to take an uh, maybe a plain uh, a blank excel sheet in one of the columns you can type in across the url of all all the web pages you have on your website now this particular sheet which i'm using i'm using it across i'm i'm showing it keyword mapping of one of my clients website my one of my clients campaign basically so i told you in the beginning that i would be using across several examples from my existing clients campaign my past clients campaign and so forth so from one of my clients uh, webs uh, campaign i've taken this sheet what we did for that particular website this is a client of mine which is into real estate business okay real estate consultancy and so forth and what we did for them for doing the keyword mapping process we first of all listed down all the web pages url over here so we had the home page url being mentioned on the top then the internal page one internal page two three four every single web page guys every single web pages uh, url is being mentioned right up over here okay so there are almost close to 41 web pages 41 web pages url are being mentioned right up over here okay and once that's been mentioned we would be going ahead and segregating or you can say splitting across all those final list of keywords which we have come up with from our keyword analysis process from the keyword analysis process whatever set of keywords which we have come up with we have to go ahead and map them across to all these urls now this mapping part would be done on the basis of the content which is available across on those pages okay so as you can see this is the home page the other pages are the internal pages if you'll see for an example there's this url which says propshell.com/city/gurgaon okay and then there is this propshell.com/city/noida if you'll find out the list of keywords which are uh, mapped across to these pages the gurgaon page the noida page they have been given across keywords set of keywords which are related to gurgaon and which are related to noida only page guys while doing the keyword mapping we try to insert across only handful number of keywords many people try to target you know 10 12 keywords per web page which i am not a fan of i don't i don't uh, recommend that from my experience i have seen 3 uh, to maximum 5 keywords per web page is good with because otherwise search engine takes a lot of time if you are for you know targeting uh, more than more than 5 keywords per web page and uh, also keep also the search engine really gets confused also so what we have done we have taken bunch of three keywords we have assigned to every single web page so this these three keywords indian real estate website website for property in india and best property websites in india this this set of three keywords this bunch of three keywords have been mapped across to page number 1 which is the home page the home page actually has got content related to these uh, you know related to these keywords only so that, that's what similarly another keyword which another web page another web page all of these web pages have got keywords right they have got keywords which are related to the uh, content which these web pages have got now this is not a strict uh, you know i would say philosophy or, or or a process which you have to follow every time guys there can be certain changes which can happen later on point of time depending upon how google actually changes so that's one thing with uh you know google that keeps changing many things i'll let you know the resources through which you can uh, keep a track of this industry but but this this process has been continuing for past good number of uh, years so there hasn't been any change as of now but i'm just giving you a heads up that there can be there can be certain changes at later point of time but for any for any specific activity not just keyword mapping it could be for anyone all right so as you can see this the overall set of three keywords per web page has been specified for every single url over here guys all right whether it's to do with the gurgaon one for gurgaon one you can see the set of three keywords says about gurgaon real estate this is the one the other keyword says gurgaon to invest in property and the third keyword says news about gurgaon property right so the content of the web so by just looking at the web url by just looking at the url i uh, we found out that what could be the content of this particular web page 
and also on the basis of the content we found out we actually placed across the keywords placed across the bunch of keywords uh, as per the content all right so that's the overall objective we are making sure that search engines are not getting confused search engines are uh, being asked to do a decent job all right one more thing which i would like to tell you if there is one keyword which is mentioned across uh, which is connected across to one specific web page try not to repeat that try not to repeat that same keyword in another web page that's something which should be avoided guys not repeating okay not repeating across one keyword in multiple web pages is a good philosophy is a good is a good strategy are we all good so far with the keyword mapping process also guys so i would request you to go ahead and uh, follow this approach so you already have one specific uh, task which is to go ahead and set up across five web pages and two blog posts and once you're done with that keyword analysis is another activity which you have to do for your website and at least for those five web pages you have to go ahead and do the keyword mapping also that's very important come up with at least three keywords per web page so you'll have 15 keywords minimum to work upon 15 keywords are we all good with this and then you can ask me if in case there would be any trouble this is an easy task there should not be any problem once you will be able to go ahead and get across those final list of keywords all right 15 keywords is why i'm saying is that uh, tanu because i have asked you for five web pages if you are choosing three keywords per web page so yesterday if you remember there were five five web pages which i have asked you if you are choosing five web pages right and three keywords per web page that means 15 total keywords and it just says one keyword should be for one specific page so like there are 13 keywords we selected then how it will be targeted on all the pages no i would have to uh, you know carry out that process again anucha i've just done it for one of the page right and out of those 13 i was able to filter out and i was able to get 16 6 of them and so forth which so i have to go ahead and carry out that process again for the other pages i just did a small example right all you have to do is minimum 3 maximum 5 keywords per web page is something which i recommend make sense any questions guys any questions queries doubt you have feel free to put that across in the chat window so that i can go ahead and help you across all right so are we good can i get a quick confirmation from everyone are you guys doing good we can select any product for service yes you can select any product for service and i'll just can you please explain again the difference between search term and the so search term is the words which uh, the people on the other side which are the search engine users type in so words which the search engine user types in are called search terms and the words which the advertisers choose for their campaign are called keywords so it's the digital marketer's responsibility to make sure that the keywords which they are defining are the ones which are the search queries only which people are typing in whether you call it search term or search query it means the same search term or search query are same but search term and keywords are different all right search term and search query uh, search term or search query are same and search term has to be the keywords basically in order to get across success in your campaigns make sense any other questions guys let me know if you case so, so anuj anuja atanu prateek any other questions guys you have feel free to put that across in the chat window so that i can go ahead and answer or right. anuj says no further questions so you could uh, prateek says to make keyword mapping maybe yes absolutely and i'll share across this excel sheet the keyword mapping sheet all right i'll i'll share the template all right
And we say, can we ask through email if you find some? Absolutely, sure. Right, Anuja, you can ask through email. That's correct, yes. For today would be of great help. We also please write, I'll send across the word document also, sure. So I'll send across the word document, I'll send across the questionnaire, and I'll send across the Excel sheet also. I thought it will take some time to settle down, good class, can we take a printout of your type details? Uh, yes, absolutely. I'll be sending across that type details in an email to each one of you. Let me just go ahead and send it right away. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, send across these documents, guys, to each one of you. Give me a second. All right, so this is going to take some time to actually get uploaded. Once it gets uploaded, I'll, I'll send it across to each one of you. All right, so in another half an hour or so forth, you will get that across, guys. Any further questions before we go ahead and wrap up our session for today? All right, so you will get across the recording, guys, uh, in the coming week. Well, Nitin is going to share that across with you and the documents are going to be sent to you by today itself. And once you'll get that, make sure you go ahead and uh, do the recap, look into it again and so forth. Okay. So thanks everyone for joining in. We'll be meeting across next Saturday, same time. Make sure you go ahead and uh, work around on your website, create across more pages and uh, do the keyword mapping, keyword uh, analysis part. Okay. And uh, that would be a that will really help you, okay? Thanks guys, take care, have a great rest of the day, have a great evening and so forth. Thanks, take care, bye-bye, bye now.